I was talking to Iggy and I was saying of all the teams I covered and the Giants were a big deal to me, the Giants and the A's, the Tony La Russa A's. These were a big deal. The Niners were always the biggest deal. It was never even a question. And as a journalist, I didn't root for them, but I felt proud of them. I felt proud to cover a team that was a national team, national team. So what I would like to do, maybe Iggy and I can take turns. What, as a journalist, are we proud of now? But what, going back to the past, starting with the Bill Walsh years. So this is a long time, 50 years or so. I can't speak before Bill because I didn't cover them. I was a student. Um, what um, snapshots make you proud? So I'm going to start. I'll, I will go back and forth, Iggy. I'm going to start with Brock Purdy. It, it, if I work, uh, let's, I'm going to pretend I'm covering the team so I don't have to do this explanation every time. I'm covering the team. I am proud to cover this quarterback. He's good enough to win a Super Bowl. He's way better than I thought he was. He's way better than the team thought he was. He's a great story. He produces. He generally does well under pressure. And at least in his dealings with the media, he's a quarterback. He's really good. So I'm saying I'm proud of Brock Purdy. Yeah, he's a lot. He's actually quite enjoyable to cover. He's quite um, generous with his answers. And that's not really, I don't think fans care, but what they should care about is everyone talking about a physical skill set, but he does have the temperament. I mean, that might not even cover it all of a quarterback. The way he works, the way he studies, his maturity, it's off the charts, all of it. And I don't know if the Niners have had a quarterback like that since Alex Smith. And he's a better quarterback than Alex Smith. And he's a better quarterback than Alex Smith. So Brock Purdy for sure. Um, Trent Williams. I'm sorry. He's getting a little bit older, but he is as good as any player that you covered on those 80s and 90s teams. It's He's a legit first ballot Hall of Famer, and he's always been extremely gracious and generous with the media when I've been around. Um, it's an honor to cover Trent Williams. Okay. I'm going to stick to one more person on offense so we can move to defense if you have people. McCaffrey. I yeah. mean, I think he's the best running back in the league. Um, I have never heard anything bad about him. He does, as far as I can tell, fulfill his duty to the media and he takes it professional. He's professional. He's a professional at everything he does. I know he was very angry after the Super Bowl. I don't believe he was only angry because they lost. If I read him right, he was angry because he lost the fumble and he's probably felt a lot of the loss was on him. and. That's hard on him, but I really admire his ability. I love to watch him run. I love to, to watch him run, and I admire his professionalism. Would you like Agreed. to move to, to defense? Sure. On defense, I'm proud of Fred Warner. Again, he's as good as any player that was on the teams in the 80s and the 90s. He's an all-time great linebacker, and he's – a model guy. I mean, it seems like he's never been in trouble. He's extremely smart. Uh, everyone at BYU has great things to say about him. I interviewed Tommy Homo once about him. They, he loves Fred Warner. He blocked me on Tommy, Twitter, and I don't know why, but I still like him. Tommy Homo uh, used to be a Niner and a Cal coach, and he's the um, athletic director at BYU. Iggy, you also like the two cornerbacks. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. The two cornerbacks are a dream to cover. They're both underrated. They both improved so much this year. Traverius Ward, Diamador, Lenore, extremely proud of those two. One of the best cornerback tandems in the league. Um, is, are we leaving anybody out? I'm proud of Talanoa Hafunga. He got hurt this year, but he's a really good young player, and he's extremely mature and professional. We're leaving out Bosa. Yeah. Um. Let's try to talk about Bosa without putting him down. Sure. Because I know you like him. And I you do. feel he's quite, a, quite an honest guy. And we know he's a hell of a player. But Iggy, I don't think he was maybe at his best this season. I don't think so. I, I, I kind of disapprove of what he did this year, although he was so generous with the media and he made our lives 
our jobs a lot easier. And I voted for him for the Gary Niver Award. But I mean, he sat out all of the off season. Didn't really seem like he got made an effort to get to know Steve Wilkes during that time. Then he kind of undercut Steve Wilkes and second guessed him after certain losses, including the Super Bowl. And I don't know. It didn't seem like he gave his best effort all the time. It's pretty tough. And then the guy got fired. So if I were Steve Wilkes, I'd have to feel like, hey, Nick, maybe if you had been here and given your best effort, I'd still have a job. So thanks. Okay. Fair That's enough. a tough one. I'm going to move back in history now. Things that make me proud of the 49ers. I'm really proud of Bill Walsh. And of all the sports figures I ever covered in my life, he meant the most to me. I got closer to him than anybody, maybe Dusty. I got very close to Dusty. Again, you're never friends, but you really know these people. Um, I feel that in the 49ers narrative, starting with Bill, call it their icons, their iconography, he is like Moses. Look, I know it's not religion. I'm just making a comparison, although some people see football as religion. I'm just making a comparison. He was Moses or Jesus. He was the one who came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments. This mm-hmm. is how we play football. And yeah. he has defined Niner football and NFL football ever since. So I'm gonna yes. I'm more familiar with Moses than Jesus. So I could speak better. I'm not putting down Jesus, believe me. Good Jewish boy, not putting him down. But he came down with the Ten Commandments. He he laid that. What are you laughing at? Yeah, I'm not putting down Jesus. He was a Jewish boy. I'm not putting him down. No, he had a bar mitzvah and everything. So True. what I'm saying, and what I'm saying is, he is the Moses of this franchise. And mm-hmm. what a thing to have. A thing yeah. is the wrong word. What a figure to have. To to um, that it all flows from him. What a thing. So I'm proud that I covered a team that had a creator or a prophet like that. Yeah. I mean, you could go more specific people. I didn't cover these teams, but it's nice to now cover a team that has such a rich rich history. Oh, there are a lot of teams that freaking don't in professional (laughs) sports. And this one does in a way that very few teams in, you know, other sports leagues can match. This one. I got another one. Eddie. Yeah. I want to say, I, I'm proud that I, now, Eddie and I had a very con- uh, difficult relationship. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, but he was a great owner. It was before the salary cap. Boy, did he, but he, he wanted to win. He he fired Seaford after two, the guy won two Super Bowls. Compare him to Jed and Jed's father and mother. They don't burn w- w- with a flame, like a torch, like Eddie burned to win. To compare mm-hmm. Eddie to to these people, it, it, you know, it's Eddie is amazing. And Iggy knows the story. Uh, a few years ago, Carmen Policy got in, um, inducted into the Bay Area Sports Hall of Fame. So he calls me and he says, Lowell, they're going to make a plaque for me and they need to have text on the plaque. Would you write it for me? And I had to make, yeah, sure. Absolutely. He said, I won't pay you. (laughs) I love Carmen. So I I wrote it and now Iggy and I go to the ceremony. It's it's this big fancy hotel in the city and they show all the plaques and Carmen says, look how beautiful. And everybody says, it's really well written, blah, 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 who knows? And he said, the only thing is, Eddie's here, and he said, "Why'd you have him write it? You know, why'd you? Have, he was so really hard on me. So anyway, the whole we go through the whole evening, and Eddie was one of the speakers, and he was really funny. And when it was over with, um, I said to Iggy, "We got to say hello to Eddie because I know what Eddie had said." So I go over, and Eddie had spoken to Iggy on the phone for article. I said, "Eddie, here's my son Grant. And he was so sweet. He said, Lowell, you really raised Grant re- really well.'" And then I said, "Look." Before I leave, I got to say something. Carmen said, you were surprised that I wrote the thing for him. I said, that was years ago that we didn't get along. We're older men now. I said, listen, some of the stuff I wrote when I was young, I was a real douchebag. And and I, I, I think that's where it came from. Eddie looked at me and he said, 
you know, Lowell, when I was young, I was a douchebag too. And you remember he said that? He says, I was a douchebag too. And then he said, you know what? There's no reason two former douchebags can't be friends. And then we hugged each other. Remember yeah. that, Iggy? He was so sweet. And we got a giggle out of that. I remember so earlier Eddie, that I'm night. I remember earlier that night we were hanging around, having a drink before things started. And we were like standing in a circle. Me, yeah. you, Kirk Reynolds, who used to be the PR director at the Niners and a few other writers. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden someone pokes their head into the circle and says, what are you guys right. talking about? And we look. No, he said, and, what's up, guys? What's up, what's guys? up guys? Yeah. I thought he said, what are you guys talking? What's up, guys? And it's like, who is barging into our conversation? Oh, it's Jerry Rice. <laughs> he put his in the arm most around innocent us. way. Yeah, he puts his arm around you and stuff. It's like, hi, Jerry. <laughs> You could yeah. hang out with us if you think we're yeah, if you cool. want. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I'm proud of Jerry Rice. I'm proud of Ronnie Lott. Yeah. yeah. What a pleasure to what a what a great player and what a great guy. I'm I'm proud that there's a Ronnie Lott in the history of this team. I'm proud there's a That's Joe true. Montana. Because they're known Steve as being, Young. you know, like the team that revolutionized offense, but they, they're the team that had Ronnie Lott. Yeah, he was so vicious. They had to change so many rules. <laughs> Not allowed to play like Ronnie Lott anymore. That's true. So I'm I'm proud of that. Uh, uh, I'm going to tell you something yeah. else. I'm proud of Iggy. I think the name 49ers is the best name of any team in sports. What a name! It's so creative and so interesting. It's it's a yeah. better name than the Dodgers. The Dodgers is a great name. The Giants ain't. Mm -hmm. The 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 no. A's ain't. The, and I grew up no. with the Dodgers in Brooklyn. It's a heck of a name, and it means trolley Dodgers. They had a if you hit the ball out to center field, there were trolleys at some point, and you had to dodge the trolleys. It's wonderful. 49ers is great. So I'm proud of that name. Yeah, like Yankees are a good name, but it's not necessarily something that's that they created. Yankees are a, a term used in the Civil War. But 49ers, like that's very unique, and you have to know California history to understand what it is. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very cool. It also kind of sounds like a gang, if we're being honest, like the 49th Street Tough Guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, it does. Right. It sounds kind of like does. a gang. Like they'd yeah. come down the street, snapping their fingers, singing yeah. doo-wop, you know, West Side Story. <laughs> I know what you mean. Anything else pop in your head? Just that, you know, that little lemonade stand that could, that, that makes us all, I, what, no, from my perspective, what I, what I'm so thankful, proud of, thankful for is that I get to cover a team that used to be the gold standard, but isn't anymore, but is sometimes seems close to being that gold standard again. It's an interesting arc. Iggy, say it again. Cause you broke up. Okay. Let me try again. Covering a franchise that used to be the gold standard of all sports, but isn't anymore, but is on the per the pursuit of reattaining it. And sometimes they get close, but they can't get it. It's a very right. interesting team. It is. So let's end with this. So their, their narrative is a quest. We love quest stories. The Holy Grail. Uh, it's a quest. And they're embarked on the quest. And they haven't gotten the holy grail yet but they're making the effort and it's thrilling season after season to watch them in pursuit and even watch them fail uh, uh sometimes failure is educational and interesting from their point of view succeeding would be better you know what it's kind of like if jk rowling's daughter wrote a second generation of harry potter books about like Harry's kid. And it, 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 it's almost like that. It's like the second generation of this franchise and it's not nearly as heroic as the first generation, but it's still interesting. Right. He's a good, yeah. the kid is a good Quidditch player, but he's not the best. No. Jed York means well, but he's not a champion. Kyle Shanahan no, has shown so much promise, but he hasn't fulfilled it like his dad did. Right. 
or like yeah. the 49ers have. Forget his dad. Like the 49ers Although the, have. he did. He was the offensive with the coordinator with That's the Niners in, for the 94 team. And he was fin- he killed San Diego in the Super Bowl, ripped him apart. It's true. Uh, Sorry about I my audio do. today. I just need to restart my computer. It's fine. Happens sometimes. It's my fault. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take full responsibility for this. Actually, no, no. It was Spencer Burford's fault. <laughs> well, we're going to have to talk to Feliciano about that. 